Concrete Jungle here with Denny Zamora. Danny, it's a pretty nice uh, training facility you have here. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, it's a city facility and it's run by Santa Fe Springs, the city of Santa Fe Springs. It's up for a youth program and then usually we've got kids from three to six. Um, before that, 12 to three is when I train the professional fighters. Um, actually, this gym's been here since 1981. So, that's it. Tell me, tell me a couple of your stable meat fighters you have here. Um, I have um, Johnny Perez, um, Sean Estrada, and Librado Andrade, who are my three professional fighters. And um, those are the three that I've been working with. So Johnny, I've been working with him for the last, since basically since he got here from Colombia. He was came here for two fights, and then after that, I trained him for the last 18 fights. And um, he'll be fighting April 23rd at the um, L what, Nokia Theater. Um, to also to work with them. They brought on Andrade. Um, we're just waiting to see what is, something comes up with him. His last fight was in May. And then Sean Estrada, I've been working with him with his last maybe five fights, I believe. So we're looking at January 28th and Temecula at the Pachanga Casino. So let's talk about a little bit of Johnny Perez. He lost his last fight versus Joseph Abeco in the Showtime Bantamweight Tournament. How did he take that loss? He took it real good. You know what I mean? After the fight, um, he sat back and then basically he was just like, you know, the better man won. And my day, my, it was an off night for him. Um, no no taking it away, nothing from Agabeco. Agabeco fought a perfect fight. I mean, so, I mean, other than that, I mean, he took it like a champ. I mean, he's like, hey, you're in this sport. You got to know how to win and lose. And it was his turn to lose. I mean, that was his first loss. So. Now, he seemed, he seemed like he's a really emotional fighter. You know, they showed that a little bit in that Showtime pre-fight show. Um, Oh, yeah. Is he the type of fighter that will let one loss really get to him, or is he the type of fighter that he might come back a little bit stronger for this next fight? No, no. I mean, he, he's, he's emotional. I mean, for the reason he fights for his family and stuff. I mean, that was basically the first time really seeing him get that emotional. And, I mean, personally, I think that had a lot to do with this, this fight. I mean, it was the same day. I mean, I think just mentally he was just, I don't know, he wasn't there. But, um, no, I think he'll come back even stronger and, and hungrier. I mean, he still needs to provide for his family back in Colombia, and that's what keeps him going. So, how are you guys looking to the next fight? It's, uh, it's not the it's not going to be the main event, but it's going to be the consolation fight. Which it's it's to a lot of fans, it's no consolation fight. This is yeah. a great fight. Yeah, I mean, two warriors going at it. I mean, it's it's, it's one of those fights that we got to win. You know what I mean, I mean, we're fighting Darchenia, who's a great fighter. I mean, so we have to win to get back in the mix, so we could challenge them, Agabeco and Abner. I mean. We both owe them rematches, so I mean, but we, the first thing that we have to do is we have to win. And if we win, then everything falls in place. So it's something if, uh, let's say, Abner Mars takes his next fight and Yanni does win his next fight, is it something you guys are going to pursue of a rematch with Abner Mars? Um, and basically, I mean, it's not something we pursue. I mean, they, they, he has his options too. I mean, he's going to want to go after the bigger guys, the winner, probably Montien Donaire. Our main thing is to just try to get that world title back. I mean, got it, the WBA, WBC. I mean, it'd be nice, I mean, for Abner and them. I mean, I know they're great friends, and I've known Abner for a long time. I mean, maybe later on, I mean, he gets just more titles, and then something happens. Okay, now next to your next fighter, Librado Andrade. He's kind of an interesting fighter. He's best known for his fight with Lucian Butte, which a lot of fans thought should have been stopped yeah. in that 12th round. A lot of fans thought that maybe the referee, you know, whatever happened there. Tell me a little bit about how did he come off of that loss? It was, it was really hard for him because on the rematch he got stopped by Butte. So a lot I had to do. I mean, he was wanting to be aggressive. Um, I think mentally he wasn't there in the second fight. A lot of things were going on within. I mean, a lot of it, I don't understand. A lot of fight, you can be in a great condition. But if you're not mentally there, I mean, all that conditioning ain't going to help you. So, I mean, I think I think he I mean, came back with Eric Lucas and fought in Canada. People love him out there in Canada. And, and he'd be one of their heroes. I mean, he did really good. So, I mean, we're just waiting to see what falls into place. Do you think that's what it was in that second fight? Maybe his mind wasn't there. He yeah. had a little bit of resentment towards yeah. how that first fight ended. Yeah, I mean, she's the one. I mean, everybody's seen how that first fight. I mean, actually, they stole the title away from him. I mean, and he's not the type to complain, but it still affects you. I mean, you go in there and you fight 12 rounds, you knock the dude out, long count. I mean, the referee was walking around. Yeah, Some so, weird things were happening. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of reasons a lot of fighters don't want to go overseas. Yeah, a lot of fighters don't want to come no. down here. It seems like you never get that full no, even treatment. Gonna, yeah, I mean, you see what happened with the Hopkins-Pascal fight. Oh, definitely. I mean, so, but, hey, we still got to go on and, I mean, fight where they want us to fight. Now, last, I want to talk about your fighter, Sean Estrada here. He's a, 
10 and 0. He's a really good fighter. Tell me a little bit about him. Uh, Sean's a very good fighter. He's real strong and fast. Uh, main thing right now, we're just trying to get him to calm down and show more of his boxing skills and um, and just take it step by step. I mean, 2011 is going to be a big year for him, and we're just going to see how far we can go. I mean, we've got the 160 pound weight limit and um, see where we can get ranked and hopefully fight for uh, some type of title, regional, or, you know what I mean? So you get ranked in the top 10 and go from there. I mean, just, it's just, like I said, I've been working with the last four fights. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we've just trying to adapt, get used to each other. So hopefully by this year, everything will click and we're on our way. Now, uh, Sean has a very interesting, very exciting style, very go forward type style, but it also leaves them open yeah. to a lot of uh, a lot of counter punches, stuff like that. We saw that in his last fight, he had a lot of trouble with that fighter. Tell me what, what happened in that fight. It basically, he got frustrated. If you get that mentality where you can knock everybody out in the first round, he dropped the guy and it didn't work out for him, and the guy it just it made it real difficult for him. He ran, he ran, held, threw punches, and Sean just got lit over, over just his temperament and everything else. The patience weren't there, and that's what the result of that was. Is work. that the first time you've ever seen him do that? Yes. Yeah. I mean, because I've never seen him actually go in a real fight, go longer than one round. Since I've been with him, it's always been first round knockouts. Now, what have you, what have you said to him? What have you, what have you done to uh, maybe calm him down next time? Uh, I'm a little the, more prepared next the time. The more like sparring, that. the more sparring mentally also, getting him in a situation where, I mean, he knows where to calm down, fill things out, not make it so fast for him, slow things down and make him, I mean, because he's quick, he's strong. Be more of just to work the jab and let the other guy open himself up instead of just trying to go for that knockout. Let it happen. Now he also it's funny because uh, some of his weigh-ins are almost exciting as some of his fights. He always seems to uh, have something going on when he's weighing his opponent. Always trying to throw him off his game. Yeah. But it never seems to work. Tell me a little bit about that. I think just some of the opponents just try to. I mean, it's mind games when it comes to weigh-ins, and I mean they just go in there and try to set him off. I mean a lot of it probably because they know his temperament. So that's one of the things, I mean, it's his mind game, trying to throw him off his fight game. And from that, but basically he takes it pretty good. I mean, most of the time they're just angry because they're hungry. So, especially cutting weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, lastly, tell me, what kind of a 2011, just for Sean Estrada, are you guys looking at, what are you guys looking to accomplish this year? Um, accomplish this is just try to get him to get ranked. I mean, get ranked in the top 10. And um, from there, just, I mean, just a lot of it is just working on technique stuff. I mean. Getting little by little, getting more rounds. I mean, that was the first time he went six rounds. So we're just looking for to get more rounds. So I mean, that's the more rounds you do, the more, I mean, prepared I could try to get him, see more if there's things that are wrong, show him what, what's going on. So I mean, basically just get more rounds and work on the technique and um, get ranked. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thanks.